Welcome to day two. We're in the trust Psalms this week and we're looking at Psalm 63, which is very different from yesterday's Psalm 23. Uh, let's start with a word of prayer. Lord, we look to you, our good shepherd, and ask you to shepherd us through this trust Psalm. Help us, Lord, that we might trust in you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's read, shall we? Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live in your name. I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek to destroy my life shall go down into the depths of the earth. They shall be given over to the power of the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. All who swear by him shall exult. For the mouths of liars will be stopped. All right, friends. Well, so right off the bat, I noticed the who, and this is another psalm written by David, and he has this opening address, oh God. And so my mind went to and asked, well, is this a lament psalm? Is it a psalm of trust, but also a psalm of lament? And I think there's good reason to say we could count this as a lament psalm. We see all four, or we see four of the five parts, I think, of a lament psalm here. We have this opening address, oh God, you are my God. And the God here uh, in, in the Hebrew is Elohim, which the root of that word means might or power. So David is praying to the all-powerful, the almighty God of gods here. He cries out to him with this vocative, with this opening address. But then he goes right into a, a description of his plight, right? We see, my soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, uh, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So there's a description of his plight. He is yearning for God. I looked up thirsty and it does mean to yearn. I looked up faints and that also means to yearn, to miss, to have a desire for something or someone who is not present. So we know that uh, there's a note on this psalm if we look it up in a study Bible that David was in the wilderness of Judah when he wrote this psalm. So David is in the wilderness. He is away from uh, God's uh, sanctuary, God's probably away from the tabernacle, away from the altar, right? So um, all right, so we have this opening address, the description of his plight, and then he goes right into a vow to praise in verse three. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. There's that vow to praise or a promise to God that he will praise. So I will bless you as long as I live in your name. I will lift up my hands. Um, okay, I want to come back to that. Let's continue with listing the parts of a lament psalm that we see here. We have the opening address, a description of David's plight. We have this vow to praise. And then I think the rest of the psalm really is a profession of trust in God. And with another vow to praise at the very end in verse 11, he says, But the king shall rejoice in God, all who swear by him shall exalt for the mouths of liars will be stopped. So 
the king shall rejoice. Again, here's here's uh, kind of this vow to praise in this future time, the king will praise the Lord. So, but the rest of this is just this profession of trust. And so what's the missing part for a lament psalm? Well, the missing part is the plea for help, right? Which I think, I don't know, that's what we're usually quick to go to is this plea for help. Lord, help me, especially, uh, I think in David's case, we see in verse 9, there are people seeking to destroy David's life. So he is in a life or death situation. I mean, his trouble isn't just any old trouble. Uh, his trouble is a lot more than uh, what am I going to wear today? What am I going to eat today? Those kinds of troubles. No, this is life or death. And we see not David not asking for help, but professing his trust that God will help him in the midst of these troubles. Do you see that? Verse five, my soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food. My mouth will praise you with joyful lips. Uh, David is remembering God when he is on his bed. He meditates on him in the middle of the night. Uh, he understands and remembers and sees in verse seven that God has been his help. Uh, it's it's in the shadow of God's wings. That, that's where David is. And he will sing for joy there. In the midst of trouble, people, in the midst of trouble. I think this is these trust psalms are mind-blowing and um, challenging, personally challenging. Do I trust the Lord in times of trial in the way that David is trusting him. He says, my soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. He knows, he trusts that God's mighty, righteous right hand is upholding him in the midst of this trouble such that he doesn't even put out a plea for help. He just makes this profession of trust. And so I think this makes Psalm 63 a very uh, special, kind of a spectacular psalm. Um, you know, I asked this question, what does David say about God's steadfast love? Are we seeing that theme arise over and over again within the Psalms? Uh, this has said this steadfast love. How does David compare it? Well, he says back here in verse three, your steadfast love is better than life. Better than life. That caught my attention, friends. Uh, better than life. What? And I put down this. I said, David is saying that God's steadfast love is the good life. Here is the good life. And for whatever reason today, that really resonated with me. You know, I, I grew up, <clears throat> I'm an optimist. My my dad was an optimist. And, and I just grew up hearing this message, life is good. Life is good. Uh, but then, you know, when life became not good, when hard things entered into life, when life or death situations arose as they will on as we're in this journey, and I saw that, no, life is hard. I didn't know what to do with this life is good. And I came to the conclusion, you know, life isn't necessarily always good. Life is hard. Uh, in this life, we will have trouble, but God is good. God is good. And I think that's what David is saying here. Uh, where is the good life? It is in God's steadfast love. There we can say, yes, life is good. So that was, that was a tidbit I drew out of this psalm and kind of resonated and spoke to my heart. Uh, some things that I learned about who God is, I saw in verse 2 that he is powerful and glorious. Uh, verse 3, this God with a steadfast, who is steadfast love. Verse 5, he satisfies our souls. Verse 7, he is our help. Verse 8, he upholds us. And verse 11, he is the one 
who stops the mouths of liars. All of that, friends, gives me hope for the day, gives me hope for the day. Uh, David clearly puts his trust in this God, this all-powerful and glorious God, the God of steadfast love, the God who satisfy, satisfies, the God who upholds, the God who stops the enemy, who, who shuts down the lies. And friends, when we're facing conflict, there is always a lie that someone is believing in or someone is spreading. So this brings, this brings great comfort to me today. For application, I just ask, do I I trust in God like David is trusting in God? Uh, am I pondering and meditating on the Lord throughout the day and even throughout the night? Uh, and and I, I kind of challenge myself to do that and specifically to ponder and meditate on God's power and glory and steadfast love. And then friends, I just, I, I, I'm challenged to praise God as David praised God in the, praises God in the midst of trouble, in the midst of a life or death situation. Uh, over and over again, David says, look, I am going to praise God for the good life, for his steadfast love. I will rejoice. Uh, his praise will come off of my lips today. There's a lot here for us to ponder and take in. I hope that helps you, you know, start into this psalm for the day. Friends, loving this. Thanks for being on this journey with me.